Uh, next, we have Team 9, Automated Pixel Data De-Identification. And they're, they're coming up on stage. All right. Okay. Um, we are Team Apti. And uh, our task was to explore the approaches to automating de-identification of 3D curvilinear uh, protected health information artifacts in radiology image data. We had a large team, some of whom are present up on this stage and uh, many other contributors who couldn't be here today, but uh, hopefully are joining via Zoom. Some quick disclosures. Uh, the team has some done some work on this topic and we've got another a number of other subject matter experts contributing as well. All right, so rolling into the problem, <clears throat> as we know, uh, a potential leak of protected health information is one of the greatest sort of privacy security risks in medicine. And uh, this is a complicated problem within the domain of radiology. Um, there are numerous approaches uh, to removing PHI. And I think a lot of you will be familiar with scrubbing, you know, uh, text-based PHI from a DICOM header, but currently there's kind of no standard or understood way to automatically identify, extract, classify, and ultimately remove these kinds of alphanumeric PHI artifacts burned into pixels, and uh, on the more extreme side of things, the voxel or three-dimensional space of a radiology image. So our aim with this hackathon uh, project was to explore the feasibility of automating this process through I'll use scare quotes here, OCR-based techniques um, to remove these kinds of PHI artifacts from the three-dimensional space of this kind of data. Uh, an additional caveat, this is more of an exploratory kind of uh, approach here. Um, we didn't have a ton of data to work with, and so we wanted to educate the community, explore the space, and understand what kinds of techniques we might be able to bring to bear to solve this problem. Okay, so here's a challenge for the audience. Um, I would ask you to review this scan and uh, see if you can determine where there might be PHI. If you're like me, I didn't really see anything of, that stood out to me here. Um, so let's dig a little deeper. So how about now? So what we've done is we've taken the same image, uh, done a three-dimensional MIP, uh, maximum intensity projection and kind of manipulated the window leveling and contrast and then cropped in and you can clearly see that there is potentially a referential kind of PHI, uh, potential exposure of PHI. Um, and so you can see clearly we've got some text, we've got uh, NIH center, radiology, imaging sciences and so forth. And then the really interesting piece of it on the right is actually if you look at the GIF, we can see the image in three dimensional space and you can see the curvilinear nature of the PHI and the text artifacts, which is going to pose the biggest problem, the most extreme problem for us to extract and ultimately resurface and de-identify. So having established that as kind of the problem space, um, which was a really striking problem for all of us, I think, um, let's explore the topic of PHI and DICOM so we can build up to how we might actually approach solving this problem. So I think many of you will be familiar with kind of the challenges around uh, PHI embedded in DICOM headers. This is text-based PHI. You've got known fields, unknown fields. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of interesting work going on to use NLP-based techniques to extract and de-identify that kind of data. But on the pixel and voxel-based side of things, um, there are kind of three main categories that we were exploring, uh, ultimately leading up to this three-dimensional kinds of PHI artifacts. Um, and this started with kind of your standard machine embedded text. Uh, this is common in ultrasound modalities. Um, we've got a synthetic data example at the bottom um, from an abdominal CT uh, and how you might ultimately redact that kind of data. Um, and then there's two dimensional artifacts. A lot of this work has been done at NIH and NCI. Um, examples on the next slide uh, will include jewelry embedded in chest X-rays and things of that nature. And then finally, there's these three-dimensional curvilinear artifacts, um, which are the alphanumeric characters that we saw in the preceding slides in the abdominal CT, but it's also um, additional kind of difficult cases such as serial numbers embedded in pacemakers and other kinds of medical devices. So now that we've established that as the problem space more broadly, how can we approach automating de-identification of these kinds of PHI vectors? 
So the first kind of caveat that I would call out is that the current space that we're in would not kind of lead to a fully comprehensive automated solution. We're really in the world of semi-automation. And what I mean by that is to be 100% sure that no PHI will leak, we at times will need to bring a human into the loop to review the redaction process. And so the challenge becomes, at what point do you involve the human reviewer and how does your automated system determine when to bring a human into the loop? So at the bottom here, uh, we've got kind of an approach uh, for how we would split up that pipeline using uh, computer vision, deep learning, and NLP to solve that problem. So I'm just gonna skip ahead here because we're getting close to time. And let's look at some of these three-dimensional artifacts. So I'd ask you again, the audience, what brand of underwear does this patient wear? Some of you are radiologists, and I wonder, can you establish where this PHI vector is? So now we're localizing it. And now we've kind of reoriented this image. And you can see quite clearly that uh, we've got an Under Armour branded symbol. And uh, you can also see we've embedded a synthetic sort of artifact here, um, illustrative of other kinds of PHI that we might encounter that would pose real serious re-identification risks. So finally, to close, uh, I know I'm at time here, let's talk about future considerations. So in the course of doing this hackathon, you know, we were working with uh, phantoms generated by Les Folio and Lucas Folio, um, and uh, we didn't have enough data to actually go ahead and train a model. So developing that publicly available data set will be key. Pre-processing work will be key as well because there are more or less infinite permutations of how this data might be embedded. And finally, uh, we'd like to uh, do some additional work to explore automated approaches that would involve kind of 3D optimized AI ML models for feature extraction and doing uh, object localization and detection via transformers and, th and things of that nature. So with that said, I'd like to close and thank you all for your time and uh, any questions. We have, I have time for a very short question. Go. Uh, it's not short. <laughs> Can I add that? Yeah. Uh, mine maybe is short. Uh, I'm just curious what uh, the uh, what brought you to this as a problem. Uh, it's it's uh, I found it very interesting because I never thought about it. So what made you think of this as a problem to solve? Well, it was sort of a. I think I'll let Les take this. Actually, <laughs> I was going to watch to see. Oh, by the way, rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> you were my first challenge. Um, uh, the fact that uh, I see it every day um, as a radiologist. And um, a couple of times we joke about it because we knew the patients at NIH. And I'd, I'd say to the technologist, hey, Greg, why don't you ask that, that, that patient's mom if they just came back from Disney World? Mickey Mouse right there. And then so, and they're like, whoa, you know, that's magic. Okay, but at the same time, uh, I don't know if you have the example of, of the high school one, but let's say someone's in high school and it tells the name of the high school on there and we can read it. I, I can see it with my eyes. It, it's because I, I'm attuned to it. I, and it was a CT tech. You know, I've been in radiology for 40 years. So I look at this and I say, this is someone in a high school football team. And I know how old they are, you know, approximately. And if I know they have lymphoma, I can find that person. The, the other aspect of this is, is that when we're generating big data sets like Dr. Ron Summers did, you know, one of the things that we ended up having to do was everybody go through every image of 10,000 different data sets to look to see whether or not there was jewelry or anything like that. If we have an automated way to do that, much better. Awesome. Great. Thank you so much. That is team nine.